share with you a few verses of Scripture uh, that I want to encourage you to look at with me. These are just some Thanksgiving verses of Scripture. So either take out your Bible, look in your device. I mean, I will provide them for you, but I like to see you kind of working along with me as we work together through this. And here are just several different passages of Scripture that deal with thanksgiving or having a thankful heart. The first one is Psalm 100 in verse number 4. Scripture says that we are to enter His gates with what? Everybody say thanksgiving. We are to enter His gates with what? That wasn't very loud. There you go. Now you're better. Wake up, folks, right? Want to enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise. And then it says, we are to give thanks to him and praise his name. So we are commanded in Scripture to give thanks to the Lord. Also in Psalm 106 in verse number 1, Scripture says, praise the Lord. Then it says what? Read it for me. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His faithful love endures forever. And there's a great song uh, that we sing around here that's pulled out of that particular verse of Scripture. But I just want you to see where we are commanded once again to give thanks to the Lord. Then over in Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 17, Scripture says, And whatever you do or say, everybody say whatever. Whatever you do, Whatever you say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. So we see, and there's numerous other passages of Scripture, many that I could have pulled and read to you along those same lines. But the point I want you to see is how the Lord expects us and he wants us to give him thanks thanks for everything that he is doing and has done in our life. Let me introduce you to a lady. Have any of you guys ever heard of Corey Ten Boom? You guys ever heard of her? Uh, she was a, a dear Christian lady, a saint of God. Uh, she was born actually in 1892. She died on her birthday in 1983. But a little bit about Corey Ten Boom. She actually wrote a book titled The Hiding Place, and it's a book that I have in my office. This is one of the uh, saints of God, I guess if you will, that we studied about in Bible college uh, years ago and her faith and her, her attitude through some of the atrocities that she went through. And what a great personal story she has. But in the classic autobiography that she wrote about herself titled The Hiding Place, Corrie Ten Boom, which by the way is from the Netherlands, she's a, uh, as a Dutch lady from the Netherlands, she tells of her sufferings now, her sufferings came from the hands of the Nazis during the reign, the evil reign of Adolf Hitler. Matter of fact, Corey Timboom and her sister Betsy, they helped hide away Jewish people as, uh, as you know that Hitler was destroying and trying to wipe out that entire race of people. But her and her family hid the Jewish people in their home to try to save their lives. Matter of fact, it's believed that Corey Ten Boom and her family saved 800 Jewish lives by just bringing them into their home and hiding them there so that Adolf Hitler and his regime would not find them and, of course, lead them and, and kill them. So it's believed that she saved about 800 lives. However, one of her neighbors reported her to... Hitler and his reign and his army, that they were hiding these Jews in her home. So the date was 18, I'm sorry, 1944, February the 28th, 1944. They went and they arrested Corey. They arrested her sister. They arrested the entire family, but they put Corey and her sister in this exclusively women concentration camp Ravensbrück, I don't even know if that's the proper way of saying that. It's the German concentration camp that, w that took place exclusively for women from 1939 to 1945. Now, February the 28th, 1944, she was incarcerated and she was put into this concentration camp. And there were, as the writings unveil in her book, The Hiding Place, she talks about all these horrendous atrocities that took place to her and to her sister as a result of being in this particular concentration camp. On one occasion in her book, she writes and she talks about 
how her and her sister were forced to disrobe themselves completely before the German soldiers while she was in the camp. What an awful, humiliating experience that was. And so as they're going through that process, Corey has this thought, it comes to her mind, and she tells her sister Betsy, this is a true story, she tells her sister Betsy in the midst of this concentration camp, she tells her, they took Jesus' clothes too. He hung naked for me. At that time, Corey's sister Betsy, she grasped and she says back to Corey, in the midst of this atrocity of having to completely disrobe in front of the German soldiers, she said to her sister Corey, Corey, I never thanked him for it. In the midst of that horrible event that these two ladies were going through, their focus was on what Jesus did for them. And Corey's sister, Betsy, says, Oh, Corey, I never thanked him for it. One of the things that made Corey and her sister, Betsy, such dynamic Christians was the fact that they chose to see life from God's perspective. They chose to live life and see life from God's perspective. Even in the midst of the horrible things that were happening to them, they chose to look at all of those events from God's perspective and were reminded that they didn't even thank Jesus for dying on the cross naked as he was disrobed and dismantled as well, as well. You see, guys, a lot of times we think that we can only be thankful through the good times in life. We can only be thankful when things are going really good for us. But if we're in the midst of some hardships, or if we're in, some, in the midst of some difficult circumstances, or we're in the midst of a trying time in our life, it's hard for us to be a thankful individual even in the midst of those particular moments. I want to remind you of a verse of Scripture that I think goes along very well with the story of Corey Timboom and her sister Betsy. And it's found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 18. This Scripture reflects that particular story. Matter of fact, she referenced the Scripture in her book. And she says this in 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. The Scripture says, Be thankful in all circumstances. Say that with me. Be thankful in all circumstances. Say it one more time. Be thankful in all circumstances. For this, Scripture goes on to say, is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Scripture says that we are to be thankful in all circumstances. So let me ask you the question. It's the title of my message. Are you thankful? Have you been thankful in all circumstances of life? Scripture says that we are to be thankful in some of the circumstances. No, what does it say? It says we're to be thankful in all circumstances that we find ourselves in because we realize that God is using every life experience that we have to go through, we may go through. He's using every circumstance that we're ever involved in to shape and fo form us to be more into the image of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So God is at work. Therefore, we know that we can be thankful in all circumstances of life. Even in the very difficult seasons of life, we can be thankful. Even in the midst of a Nazi concentration camp, Corey and her sister Betsy were thankful for all that the Lord has done for us. I want you to look also in Psalm 50 and verse number 23, the first part of the verse. Scripture says, but giving thanks is a sacrifice that truly does what? honors me, the Lord is saying. Whenever you give thanks, it's a sacrifice that you are making, even in the atrocities of life, in the difficult seasons of life, in all the circumstances that you find yourself in. Whenever you are being a person that has a thankful heart and a thankful spirit, and you're giving thanksgiving unto the Lord, Scripture says, Jesus says, God says, I should say, that honors me. 
You are honoring me. You're honoring God whenever you have a spirit of thanksgiving, even in the difficult seasons of life. So whenever we are offering our thanks and our praise to God, I want you to see that it honors Him. And Scripture says, whenever you and I honor the Lord, that He will honor us. That's what it says in 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse number 30. I will honor those who honor me. So whenever you give your thanksgiving to the Lord in all circumstances of life, the good, the bad, the ugly, all of them, you're thanking the Lord for all that he has done for you. Scripture says that I am honored when you do that. God is saying, I am honored when you do that. And whenever you honor me, Scripture says in 1 Samuel 2, that I am going to honor you. You want to live in the blessings of God? I don't know about you. I want to live in the blessings of God. I want my family to live in the blessings of God. I want to live and walk in the favor of God. You know one of the ways you can do that? One of the ways you do that is simply by having a heart of thanksgiving. In all things, you're thanking the Lord for the opportunity to breathe that day. You're thanking the Lord for the opportunity to be saved that day. You're thanking the Lord for all that He has done for you, even in the atrocities of of life, you're still learning how to be thankful and have a heart of thanksgiving. And God says in his word that whenever you thank me, God is saying it honors me. And then he says in his word, whenever you honor me, I will honor you. In other words, we will then receive the blessings of the Lord in life. Why? Because we're thanking him for it. We're acknowledging all the wonderful things that he has done for us. So let me ask you a question. How is your Thanksgiving attitude? Going into this week of Thanksgiving, how is your attitude? How are things working out in your life? How is your Thanksgiving attitude? Are you facing some tough times? Are you finding yourself in some difficult circumstances or situations? Ask yourself, have I been complaining? Have I been griping? Have I been just sour lately because of all these things that are happening in my life? Am I in a season of difficult circumstances? Well, if you are, I want to encourage you, why not try to push the pause button, change the way you think, and start praising the Lord and thanking Him even in the difficulties in life? Why would you do that? There's one reason why. Because God knows exactly what's going on in your life. He knows all that's going on in your life. And here's another good reason why you should thank the Lord. He's in control. I don't care what the news media may tell you who they think is in control. I'm here today to tell you on the authority of the Word of God that God is in control. He is sovereign. We've got every reason in the world to have a cheerful heart and to be a people that has a thankful spirit about us because God knows about every circumstance that I'm involved in in my life. He is in control of all things. And guess what? He cares about you. He cares about you and me so much that he gave his only son to die on the cross for your sins and for my sins. And not only does he love me, not only does he have a care for me, not only does he know about all things that are going on in my life, not only is he sovereign and in control of all things, but he also has a purpose for me. In the midst of my trials and tribulations, God still has a purpose and a calling on my life. And the same is true of you, which is another reason why we can have a heart of thanksgiving in all circumstances that we go through, even in the trials and tribulations that we go through. Guys, you are reminded, right? You do remember that there are four types of hardships that you'll go through in life. You remember those? I preached a series of messages on this sometime back, but I just want to remind you again here. I thought this is a good place to remind you of this. Matter of fact, you can pretty much find yourself, whenever you're in a hardship in life, it's one of these four reasons why you're going through a difficult season in life right now. Get this. One of the reasons, one of these four reasons is the reason you're going through a hardship right now if you're going through a hardship. One is simply a trial. Now, here's what I want you to understand about trials. Trials are designed by God to draw us closer to himself. So trials are designed by God to draw us closer to himself. What he's doing, he's building our godly spiritual character. 
He's building us into the person that he wants us to become. So therefore, he allows trials to come into our life. They're sent by God to build our character and draw us closer to him. Those are trials. Don't get them confused with temptations. Temptations are designed by Satan. They are designed by Satan to draw us away from God and to destroy our character, right? There's a difference between trials and temptations. Major difference is who they're coming from. Trials are coming from who? Talk to me. Come on, guys, wake up. Trials are coming from who? God. Temptations coming from who? Trials are coming to build what? My character. Temptations are coming to destroy what? Our character. So you got to see that. Once you see that, it'll help you get through some of that. But I said there's four types of hardships in life. There's trials. There's temptations. Then there are trespasses. Well, what are trespasses? And all these terms are mentioned in Scripture. What are trespasses? Trespasses are hurts that are caused by the sins of others. Right? And then there are troubles. What are troubles? Well, they're usually, but not always, the consequences of our own sinful actions. So trespasses are caused by someone else's sinful actions, and troubles, sometimes we bring trouble on ourselves because of our own sinful actions. Get it? Good. Four types of hardship. So in the midst of these hardships, we can still praise the Lord, right? We need to be praising the Lord. So I want to encourage you today to start today. Start today to live a life of thanksgiving. And when you do, I promise you, on the authority of the Word of God, there's going to be some things that change in your life. First of all, it's going to be your attitude. Your attitude's going to change, right? Wives, you want the attitude of the husband to change? Husband, you want the attitude of the wives to change? I mean, look around. You want your attitude to change? then you develop a heart of thanksgiving. You choose the day that you say, you know what? In all circumstances in my life, I am going to choose to praise the Lord. I mean, I don't like the circumstance I'm in right now. I don't like where, what's going on in my life right now. You may be saying, but even in the midst of these difficult situations and circumstances that I find myself in, I am going to choose. By the way, I started this sermon by showing you several passages of Scripture where we are commanded to praise the Lord, where we are commanded to give thanksgiving unto the Lord, right? Remember me showing you those? Do you realize those are commands from God? And here's something I know. God will never command you to do anything that you cannot will to do. Now let that sink in. God will never command you to do anything that you cannot will fully do. In other words, you can make a choice. You can choose today, just as Corey Ten Boom and her sister Betsy made a choice in the midst of that horrible atrocity that was taken on in their life. They stopped and they paused. They remember that Jesus was stripped and hung on the cross for their sins. And they're like, oh, we didn't even thank him for that part of his suffering and his shame that he went through. And in the midst of what they were going through, they stopped to thank him. Guys, you've been commanded to praise the Lord. You've been commanded to give him thanksgiving. And so therefore, God will never command you anything to do that you cannot willfully choose to do. Now, if you're going through some difficult circumstances and you find yourself in a place that you don't enjoy the life and, and where you are right now, and you choose or, and, and you say, well, I just can't praise the Lord today, or I just can't be thankful today. No, you just choose not to be thankful today. You're just choosing not to praise the Lord today. Because God says on the authority of his word that I command you to praise me. I command you to give me thanksgiving. Matter of fact, he also says in scripture that if we do not praise the Lord, that the rocks in the side of the mountains will cry out and praise the Lord. God has created us for a purpose he loves us. He cares about us. He is sovereign. He's in control. He is always there. So it doesn't matter the circumstances that you find yourself in the middle of today. You still can find reason to praise the Lord and to offer him thanks. And when you do, your attitude is going to change. Secondly, also the people around you are going to be blessed. Say amen right there. 
right? You want the, maybe, maybe it's someone you're living with or someone in your family or a coworker, or maybe even the boss. And man, when they start praising the Lord and offering him Thanksgiving, their attitude's going to change and you're going to be blessed, honey, as a result of it, right? People around you are going to be blessed. And of course, Jesus Christ is going to be glorified and honored. So all of that was my introduction. Can I give you my main point and my message today? You guys with me? Let me give you three ways to be thankful through this holiday season, through this Thanksgiving season, going into Christmas, no matter the circumstances that you are in the midst of. I believe Scripture offers, offers us three directives when it comes to being and having a heart of thanksgiving. So let me share with you three ways that you can be thankful. I promise you my introduction is longer than my three points, okay? Here's three things as we close this thing out, right? To be thankful, number one, be thankful in your actions. Everybody say actions. What are actions? Actions are things that I do. Things that I do, things that I'm involved in, it's the way I act, it's the way I react, it's, it's what I'm doing in life, it's what I'm saying in life. Everything that I do and everything that I say, be thankful in your actions. Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 17, Scripture says, and whatever you do or say, everybody say do or say, that's it. Whatever I do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Now, this verse gives us a clear direction, and it's stating, in whatever you do or say, give thanks. Now, it's real easy to get sucked into those people that are complaining. Are you with me? Whether it be at home in the family, whether it be on the job, in the community, at school, whatever the case may be, it's real easy to get sucked into negative people. Are you with me? Refuse to do that. Do not be that person. Remember that you are to be thankful in all of your actions. You're to find a way somehow to praise the Lord in the midst of all the negativity that may be taking place around you. Don't get sucked into that. Oh, yeah, I'm with you. Let me, let me tell you a story that can add to whatever it is they're talking. Don't do that, right? That's not being a thankful believer. That's not honoring the Lord. That's not praising him at all. Matter of fact, that is making Satan very happy when you get in there and you add to all that negativity. Say amen or oh me, but let me know you out there, right? Be thankful in your actions. So whenever you hear all of that going on and you hear them complaining about having to work or whatever the case may be, just step in that conversation. It's a great day to praise the Lord. I just thank the Lord that I'm able to stand here today. I thank the Lord that my heart's beating today. Oh, hold on. It just beat again. One more. Ha, there it goes again. It just keeps beating. Praise the Lord, right? I mean, if that's all you got to praise him for, praise him for that. Listen, there's something that we can find to praise him in our actions and everything that we do and whatever it is that we're saying, Scripture says that we are to give thanks. This verse encourages us to live out our faith through our actions and through our reactions. Be careful how you react to situations. And also be very careful about your actions. Be sure that you are giving thanks in your actions. That's number one. Number two, Scripture also says that we're to be thankful by remembering. There are some things that we are to remember and give thanks, right? I want you to look at this verse of Scripture in Psalm 77 in verse number 11. It says, but then I recall all you have done, O Lord. I remember your wonderful deeds of long ago. Have you ever stopped to pause and reflect about all the wonderful things that God has done for you? Think about it. Remember. Remember, I recall all I've done, oh Lord. I remember your wonderful deeds of long ago. Lord, I recall all that you have done for me. Stop right there and reflect. Matter of fact, let me challenge you to do this. I don't know if anybody take me up on this, but it's for your own good if you do. Let me challenge you to take this verse this week and make a list. Get you out a legal pad, get you out a piece of paper, something. And I want you to write down all the things that God has done for you. Let me tell you why you're going to need that. You're going to need that because you're going to find yourself 
in some hardships in life. Whether they're trials or tribulations, whether they're trespasses or temptations, whatever they may be, you're going to find yourself in some hardships in life. And it's going to be real easy to fall into the flesh. Matter of fact, you may find yourself like Job with some friends and a, and a spouse that even says, curse God and die. Uh, Job, you brought all this on yourself. What sin have you done now, Job? Right? And of course, Job hadn't done anything. But God was working in his life. You're gonna, you may find yourself in some hardships in life. And you may find yourself having negative people around you that are wanting you to curse God and die, so to speak, as Job's wife wanted him to do. What are you going to do in that moment? Because the Lord wants you to be thankful. He wants you to praise Him. So here's what I want to encourage you to do. But then I recall all you have done, O Lord. I remember your wonderful deeds of long ago. I want you to write down a list of things. What has the Lord done for you? Think back over your life. What has the Lord done for you? You know, after being pastor here for 24 years, I look over 22, three years, whatever it is, since 99. I look over the congregation, and I can make a list for several of you. I can tell you some amazing things that God has done for you. I can see how God answered your prayer about the salvation of a loved one. I can see how God answered your prayer through healing you of sickness and cancer or whatever it was that you were going through. I can see how God answered your prayer by bringing a significant other person into your life. I can see how God answered your prayer through your children. I mean, just me as your pastor, I could write a, a list for a lot of you on what God has done for you. But let me ask you, have you ever made a list? Have you ever stopped to reflect on what God has done for you? If nothing else, at least start at your salvation. Start at the point when God saved you. Start at the point where God redeemed you. And then look all back through your life at how God has blessed you and God has moved in your life. There's a lot that we can thank Him for. Thank Him for His salvation. Thank Him for a copy of the Word of God. I mean, we get, and I hope, I, oh, I so hope you guys are still engaged in the Foundations Journal and you're reading a chapter a day and you're journaling and you're writing down a few things. You know, I, I can't tell you how many times I've read this Bible through. I, I can't tell you how many times I've read I have no idea. Numerous times I've read it. And one of the challenges for me in going through the Foundations Bible study that we're doing right now with our V groups and individuals or families at home or whatever, one of the challenges is that oftentimes I'll start to read a chapter and it's so familiar for me, that chapter is, that sometimes I'll just speed read through it. Right? I mean, sometimes I'll just find myself, oh, I know what's going to happen here. Yeah, yeah, I know what's happening. And I have to stop. And I have to say, John, stop. God has something fresh for you today in his word. So my prayer is, as I'm just reading that one chapter that day, I say, Lord, reveal to me what it is you want me to hear today. Help me not to be so familiar with this chapter that I miss what you're trying to speak to me today. And whenever I pray something like that, I see God moving through that chapter. And then I find different things here and different things here. I mean, I can't tell you how many sermon series that I've got written down in my notes. Man, that'd be a great sermon series. I need to come back and preach on that. That'd be a great, I need to preach on that. But God is feeding me and feeding me just by reading one chapter a day. We ought to be thankful that we have a copy of the Word of God. And people oftentimes ask me, Pastor, I want to hear God speak to me, but how do I hear Him speak? I've never heard an audible voice. I'll be honest with you, church, I've never heard an audible voice from God. Some people say they have. God can communicate however He wants to communicate. But 90% of the time, He's going to communicate to you through His Word. As you open the Word of God, that's something we ought to be thankful for, that we have a copy of the Word of God, that we can read and we can hear what the Lord is speaking to us about for that particular day, in that particular season of our life. We can thank Him for the comfort that He provides for us. We can thank Him for His presence when He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. We can thank you for the peace that He gives us in the midst of difficult circumstances that we may be going through. There's so much that we can thank Him for. Psalm 105 and verse number 5 
Remember the wonders that he has performed, his miracles and the rulings that he has given. There's so much. And I just want to encourage you to get you out a piece of paper and write down all the many wonderful things the Lord has done for you. So remember. Last thing. I'll close out with this point. Be thankful in everything. Right? Be thankful in everything. We talked about being thankful in our actions, everything I do and say. We've talked about being thankful in remembering, going back and remembering all that the Lord has done for us. But then finally, we just want to wrap it up here with be thankful in everything. And I've already unpacked this verse for you, but I want to mention it once again. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. So there it is, folks. Three ways that you can be thankful this holiday season going through Thanksgiving, going through um, Christmas season, and all that's going to be coming into play there in your life, and how busy life's going to get for many of us during that season. We can have a thankful spirit. So I want to encourage you, be thankful in your actions, be thankful in your remembering, and be thankful in everything.